Seth Thorson with Eurotech Auto here. We are here to do a review on the Texan Nemo scan tool with the new IDC6 software. Okay guys, I'm here to just, just show you a little bit of what IDC6 over IDC5 does and some of the changes that, that we really enjoy. So obviously at the start menu, you have your car. You can see it opens to my favorites page. Um, as a technician, it's really nice to set what I wanna see every time. The main screen breaks out to this, which is their diagnostics, smart AI, which we're gonna talk about what smart AI diagnostics does, which is a really cool tool to help you guys out. But one of the things I like in the new user interface is able to set the favorite. So for me, I like to set my wiring diagrams because I always want to see my wiring if I have a no comm or no communication or a different issue, I want to see what my wiring looks like. I want to set technical data sheets, which is Texas way to give you information about the system, how the system works, more data. So I want to be able to see that at all times and I want my normal diagnostic and then I want to use my smart AI diagnostics. Now to set this up, we certainly can add anything we want to our favorites. Um, I have just set up what I want, but again, you can click through the menus and you can see all your special functions, special functions for brake pad replacing, key coding, electric vehicles, transport mode, particulate filter, those types of things are all right here. Again, we could add these to our favorites if we wanted to, um, I've set up my favorites how I want. Anything else is more advanced features that I'll use to click that menu. But normally I just want these functions up and ready. Okay guys, we're gonna show you a little bit of what the Smart Diagnostic does. This car is a 2009 BMW 535 with over 200,000 miles on. That It came in with an ABS light on and a check engine light. So we're first gonna scan the car, see what codes are on here. And then we're gonna take a look at how the Smart Diagnostic can guide us in troubleshooting the problem and give us some initial information. So again, because I set it up in my favorites, I'm gonna start with the smart diagnosis. It's gonna connect to my multi-hub, which can be connected via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, uh, depending on where you're at in the shop. So really cool feature if you're not right on top of the car. So we're gonna let this connect and run its test as it goes here. It's gonna take a couple minutes to run through this test. Okay, we've gone through our quick test of all the modules in the vehicle. So at this point now, we have fault codes that we're looking at, right? So we have fault codes in our ABS, our air conditioner, our engine system for fuel injection. We have some in our body gateway and we have some in our shifter and our headlight adjustment. All right, so let's take a look at steering angle sensor plausibility. So now once we click on it, AI is gonna automatically pull some information here. So it's telling us it's a plausibility issue with the steering angle sensor. We also notice that we have a low voltage under voltage code. Well on BMWs with an under voltage code, it also can cause a steering angle sensor reset. One of the very cool things with what Texa does here is it's gonna pull all the information on the steering angle reset. It's also gonna pull what we call AI operations. And the AI operations means I don't have to go through that parameters and where I was showing you, you have to go to this menu to get to this menu to do your resets. AI operations is gonna automatically pull up steering angle sensor calib calibration and say the reliability is high that that's gonna fix it. We know that recalibrating the steering angle sensor based on the voltage codes will most likely resolve our issue. The other thing, if you're not super familiar with BMWs, it's gonna give you some more information on these little documents. So if we click this document on steering angle sensor out of Texas database, it's pulling some known fixes. So it's pulling that in diagnostics, adjustments carry out steering angle sensor calibration. It's saying that that probably will fix it. It also says there was another instance here and it pulls out some more information that tells you to check steering wheel, make sure when live values your steering wheel is moving. Also give you pins on the ECU as well as a pin out of what pins we're gonna check. So again, very, very helpful information for the technician that maybe doesn't work on these cars a lot. So then if we go down to like our Vanos intake code, we have indicates a problem with the Vanos intake system related to engine management. Doesn't give us a lot of information, but it does tell us to check the Vanos solenoid wiring and timing chain for any issues. Again, this is gonna be helpful information for the technician that at least get a starting basis point for their diagnostics. All right, guys, we're gonna take a look at some additional features that this Texa tool has that are kind of cool. So uh, when we look at this, we're gonna go into the actual control unit now. So we're going into the control unit. It's gonna make us reconfirm that we're going in the control unit. 
So the features we want to look at on this is some additional parameters. Um, when we look in here, technical documentation is really, really helpful. So we're going to have service sheets, which gives you a self-diagnostic, which tells you how to do different individual tests, how to do the steering angle calibration that we had mentioned earlier. Vehicle sheets give you acronyms. If you don't know what BMW's abbreviations are, if you don't know what DSD stands for and all BMW's abbreviations, you can click on these acronyms and you can go. What is DSC? Well, DSC stands for Dynamic Stability Control, right? These aren't terms that everybody's familiar with. Uh, how to initialize your rear windows, how to reset your tire pressure. Really, really cool diagram of how to reset your TPMS. So just some really quick tools that are here that are helpful, as well as wiring diagrams that we talked about. If you're trying to do a pinout, you need to check the two wires, the connectors. You can pull up this pinout and you can look at the wear signal. We're not hooked up to our scope right now, but it tells you what pin the signal is on as well. So just some really cool information that helps you go through the different things as you walk through this tool, right? So you can print this, pin it, you can do whatever you want. Go back to here. Again, we're back in the module, back in this ID6 here. Close out of this wiring diagram. Now what we also have is in Texa AI, it's gonna pull more information of AI just like you saw before, but we also have this neat global search. And what this global search does is it pulls up the vehicle and it sees I had a previous vehicle hooked up. Do I wanna to switch to this vehicle? Yes. So now we're accessing Texas database for this particular vehicle. So on this vehicle, we're now working on this BMW. If I need to say reset rear window, it's now searching its global AI database, which is a little bit of a technician helper here, right? Provided it has this information, it says to reset the rear window, use the window switch in the door to open the window. Once it reaches its lower stop, press it for 15 seconds. That's your rear window calibration. You can also click on the link and get more information about it, of how that works. If for instance, ooh, I don't know how to reset the TPMS. I showed you the other spot to find it, the manual way. But if you say, hey, I don't know how to do it, and I just want to type TPMS into our global AI search, as soon as AI comes up with it, we'll be able to give you more information on it. So at times, here's a good example. I type TPMS, AI still thinking. It can't find TPMS. I just said, okay, well, let me type tire pressure. It's still thinking about TPMS. Let me type tire pressure. And it did find tire pressure. It says to reset tire pressure with iDrive or without iDrive, right? The other diagram we showed you was iDrive. Now, if we look at, if we didn't have iDrive, it's going to give you a pretty good information on how to reset without iDrive through the instrument cluster. Again, this is just a global search tool that's really going to help you figure out what's going on with this. I could also type misfire one, and it should pull up more information on a misfire on one. Again, this is just going to give you information out of their global search bank, which can help you narrow down the problem quickly and efficiently, especially if it's a new car to you that you're not used to working on. IDC6 software includes car, truck, off-highway, bike, and marine. AI is integrated in all these softwares. We are at the beginning stages of AI. So as it continues to learn, as updates continue to happen, you're only going to see more advancements in how AI works. It has the tendency to be able to help technicians in the bay, as well as speed up service processes. Today we reviewed the changes from IDC6 versus IDC5, including the new smart AI integration in IDC6. Thanks for watching. This is Seth at Eurotech. Till next time.